Good morning children. I will be taking EVS for you. The first unit is Living World. Environment. The things around us is environment. Protection of environment is the duty for all. We can enjoy environment by seeing. Here are a few pictures for you. Hills, forest, river, falls, in insects, stream, honeybee, eagle, snake, soil, birds and animals. All these come under our environment. Living things. In our environment, we have both living and non-living things. In this chapter, we will be studying about living things. Plants and animals are living beings. Here there are pictures of trees, plants, insects, animals and aquatic animals. There are certain characteristics to decide them as living beings. I will read the points follow where I am reading. Living beings are made up of cells. Living beings respire. Living beings eat food. Living beings grow. Living beings move. Liv living beings excrete. Living beings reproduce. Living beings respond to stimulus. Living beings have lifespan. Now, we will be studying each characteristic in detail one by one. The first characteristic is living beings are made up of cells. Observe these pictures. They are plant and animal cells. I will tell you a small example. When we construct a house, we use bricks, cement, water, steel, wood, etc. and complete a house. Similarly, the body of living being is made up of cells. You will be studying about parts of cells and its functions in higher classes. Next, living beings respire. During respiration, living beings take in air, use the oxygen and give out carbon dioxide. There are special organs to respire in animals. Example, human beings have lungs. Plants also respire. They respire through stomata. What is a stomata? The small openings on the lower surface of the leaf is called stomata. Look at the third picture. There is a upper and lower surface of the leaf. Next, living beings eat food. Living beings get energy through food. In our day-to-day -day life, we do a lot of work. Even to stand or talk, we need energy. How do we get energy? We get energy by eating. Both plants and animals eat food. Now, let's see how plants eat food. Each part of a plant does one or the other activity. Plants are called as autotrophs. Why? Plants produce their own food, so they are called as autotrophs. Next is the process. process. Plants use solar energy, carbon dioxide in air, absorb water, minerals and salt from oil, soil through roots and prepare food with the help of chlorophyll in leaf. This process is called as photosynthesis. Food for animals. Animals do not prepare their own food. They depend on plants and other animals for food. Therefore, animals are called as heterotrophs. All animals do not eat the same type of food. Based on the food they eat, the, ani the animals are classified as follows. Herbivore, Carnivore, Omnivore. Herbivore animals that eat only plants and plant products. Example, cow. Carnivore animals that eat e other animals. Example, tiger. Omnivore animals that eat both plants and animals. Example, dog. Next, living beings grow. The increase in height and size of a living being is called as growth. 
all organisms are small at the time of birth and later acquire definite height and size. Living beings move. Animals move from one place to another. They have special organs for this example. Human beings move with legs. Birds move using feathers. Snakes move with the help of muscles and scales in their body. But plants do not have organs for movement as in animals. Soil holds the root of plants. We can observe slight movement in plants like the roots of plants grow towards water. And in a sunflower plant, we can notice the sunflower turning towards the sun. Next, living beings excrete. Animals throw out unwanted things of the body in the form of carbon dioxide, sweat, feces and urine. They have special organs for this process. If not, the body gets affected. Plants, plants also give out carbon dioxide during respiration. Dry leaf, stem, rotting parts, all these get separated from the plants. Next, living beings reproduce. The process of an organism giving birth to young ones is called reproduction. For example, cow directly gives birth to young ones, but hen lays eggs and those eggs hatches after a few days. Next, life cycle of a plant. Seeds develop from seeds. Some plants produce new plants through stem buds. See the picture below. The plant starts life as a seed which germinates and grows into a plant. The mature plant produces flowers. They produce seeds. These seeds can be planted. This is life cycle of a plant. Next, living beings respond to stimulus. Living beings respond to the surrounding stimulus. Usually, they respond to touch, heat, cold, sound and smell. They have special organs for these. For example, see the first picture, there is a hot bowl. hot bowl. When we touch it, we remove our hands from it. It means we are responding to the heat. That means we are responding to the stimulus. See the second picture, the dog is sitting quietly. But when it sees meat, the dog's mouth starts watering. It means the dog is responding to stimulus. And in the third picture, it is a touch-me-not plant. When we touch it or if any insect touches it, the leaves start closing because the plant is responding to stimulus. Living beings have life span. The period between life and death of an organism is called lifespan. Organisms take birth, become adult, reproduce, become old and die at last. Different animals have different lifespans. Here are a few. Average lifespan of a turtle is 150. It can live up to 150 years. Next, we have elephant. It can live for 70 years. Next, for cow, it is 20 years. Eagle, 20 years. And a man can live for 70 to 80 years on average. Next, based on lifespan, plants are classified into three. Annuals, biennials and perennials. What is annuals? Plants which bear flowers, produce fruits and die in a year or a season. For example, jowar, wheat, paddy, paddy pumpkin, vegetables, cotton, etc. The picture below is a cotton plant. Next, biennials. Biennials are plants which live up to two years or two seasons, produce flowers, fruits, seeds and dye. For example, carrot, ginger, cabbage, sugarcane, beetroot, etc. The picture below is a sugarcane plant. Next, perennials. Perennials are 
plants which live for many years and keep producing flowers fruits and seeds example mango neem jackfruit arcanut nut etc the picture below is a coconut tree apart from life span plants are classified into two by the type of seeds they produce they are monocotyledons and dicotyledons monocotyledon seeds have only one cotyledon it means only one leaf will sprout at first during germ during germination example jowar ragi wheat paddy millets etc see the picture below is a monocot seed dicotyledons dicotyledon seeds have two cotyledons it means two leaves will sprout at the first during germination example horse gram groundnut red gram bengal gram black gram etc see the picture in the right side it is a dicot seed next importance of animals animals maintain the environment balance if animals are destroyed it affects other animals how does it affect other animals example if there is no fishes that is small fishes there will be no food for for shark turtles octopus etc by this way other animals are affected so as i told you in the beginning protection of environment is our duty if we protect nature it will protect us here ends your first chapter thank you children